pushed stocks largely to the downside. The S&P 500 and the Dow ended lower, led by declines in energy and financials, but again, off the earlier lows. Those growing economic worries here in the U.S., forget Europe, bad enough, <laughs> yeah. pushed U.S. Treasury yields down to three-month lows. The 10-year yield briefly touching at 1.90%. Folks, that is, that is not money that's being made for your portfolio. It did pull back up and slightly traded higher on the day. All right, Larry Shover is in the pits of the CME Group. Former NFL player turned money manager Eugene Profit, what a great name, is here with some unique buying opportunities. Adam Shapiro, Sandra Smith will be uh, breaking in with the latest earnings reports. We have a slew coming your way. But Larry, let's get started with you at the CME. I, look, I have a kind of a macro question. Uh, all of this economic uncertainty, how does that play out versus the valuation on the equity markets right now? Well, right now it's playing out perfectly. This is a perfect example of a cautiously confused market. Nobody knows what to do. The pain trade, again, is to the upside because there's nowhere else to put your money right now. People just dismiss the ADP report. They uh, are grabbing a hold of the notion that maybe a Spanish uh, bank deal is in the works and mm -hmm. perhaps the jobless claims numbers will be good. So here we are. We're down just a little bit, but great momentum on the close. Uh, Eugene, look, you know, we're looking at what some people might regard as a spring slowdown. Do you see it that way? And if so, do you leave things as is, or are you going to scoop up some things that you feel are pretty inexpensive at this point? Yes, hi, Liz. I think the story here is the resiliency of the market in the face of mixed economic data. I think mm -hmm. that um, what you just mentioned, 10-year um, treasuries at less than 2%, when you get a dividend yield and a large-cap stock that has some growth, um, that's selling at price earnings multiples below the market, I think it's a very attractive time to select some good high quality names. Eugene, let me follow up and we've talked about Europe at the top of the broadcast and all the uncertainty there and all the doomsday uh, predictions, but I get the sense there's a little bit of a disconnect, a decoupling, uh, to use the, the phrase that comes up a lot, between what's going on in Europe and a U.S. market, or the equity markets that continue to gain ground. Uh, actually, yes, I do agree. I think the U.S. market um, is certainly doing better. The economy in the U.S. is doing a little bit better than Europe. Um, but I, I think today inside the numbers is a little bit of a risk um, on environment. If you looked at the consumer staples st mm -hmm. sector, the telecom sector, um, those sectors performed a little bit better. Um, the financials and energy really uh, performed less well. Financials still are somewhat weak coming off of, you know, the, the summer lows. But I, I think net-net, um, the U.S. market is showing mixed data, but doing better than the rest of the world. Okay, Larry, looking, and again, we're getting some numbers coming in in just a minute. We're just mm -hmm. parsing through to make sure, you know, it's better to be right than first. Um, so we're just <laughs> working on that at the moment. But what do you feel about this earnings season? I mean, we've had more than 70% of the S&P 500 companies that have reported beating. Yeah, you know, the heavy lifting on the earnings season is over. And on the margin, it's all been very good. And we see the re result right behind me. I mean, it's hard to believe the S&P, the cash is above 1,400. The bulls okay. control the agenda right now. All right, hold on, hold on. We've got Green Mountain Coffee and DreamWorks. But, Adam, let's get mm -hmm. to Green Mountain first. Yeah. Green Mountain shares have been halted, by the way. Just want to let you know, Liz. Mm. And uh, there's some big news about this. First, Green Mountain uh, missing big time on revenue, uh, reporting $885.1 million. Mm -hmm. In miss. revenue for the second quarter, uh, the street was expecting 971.65 million. Now, non gap mm -hmm. earnings per share right in line with expectations, but it is a big miss on the revenue line, Liz. All Ashley. right, let's go to Larry, get to your response to that. We know the coffee prices are sky high, but Larry, this is a big miss on the revenue side. Yeah, it's a big miss, but maybe they finally got their inventory turnover correct. You guys know that the SEC is probing because they have seemed to maybe uh, fudge their numbers just a little bit. The inventory has not been reflective of uh, the revenue. So maybe the truth is in the pudding right now, and that's why the stock is down, not up over $100 a share where it was. Okay, Eugene, I, you know, whether you, you own this stock, I don't know, do you own Green Mountain? I own Green Mountain. I don't own it now. I, I think that the story here is it's very competitive now. You have Starbucks um, in the K-Cup market now, Dunkin' Donuts in the K-Cup market. Um, and so I'm not surprised that Green Mountain is having a little bit of a revenue trouble here. Yeah, you know, and, and they do. And we talked to Howard Schultz, who has that deal with the Green Mountain Keurig Cup machines. But now they're also over at Starbucks making their own, the Verismo. And he told us unequivocally, we're staying mm. with Green Mountain. Well, better to spread it out. But just makes you wonder eventually if he doesn't end up picking a winner at some point, And it may not be Green Mountain. Larry? 
Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of other ones to pick. The space is getting compressed. I mean, I, I have trouble with Green Mountain just because of the SEC probe and how they have over, seem to have overstated their profits. Revenue has not been uh, in line. I don't, I'm not surprised at all that they've missed. I wouldn't touch the stock right now. Okay, all it right. is halted, though. Green Mountain still halted. It is halted. Let's go back to Adam for DreamWorks. What do you got, Adam? Uh, well, uh, for DreamWorks, it's a beat and a beat on revenue. $136.1 million in the first quarter for mm -hmm. them. Uh, the street expecting $133. Million. Earnings per share coming in at 11 cents. The street was expecting 9 cents. Uh, they're saying that in the second quarter they expect DVD sales of Kung Fu Panda 2 and Madagascar to help contribute to their bottom line. But I know Liz is a big fan of Puss in Boots. Oh, Ashley. Puss in Boots. Well, they're expecting when it goes to television that that would be it. But they've also got a big Shanghai opportunity where they were the first to really get in there and say, we're going to make deals with China. Um, I don't know. You know, Eugene, a lot of companies, it's sort of like the dot-com era where they say, well, we have a dot-com strategy and the stock would jump. Now a lot of these uh, movie companies are saying, let's have a Chinese strategy. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I think content is, is king here. Um, DVD sales are down. Um, I'm happy to see that they did um, beat uh, in both areas. I'm looking forward to the Madagascar 3 release. I have a bunch of young daughters, um, <laughs> but we don't own this stock, but I think that... Um, it, they're set up to do well, seeing that the quarter came in a little bit better than expected. All right. Whole Foods is out. Adam, how did they do? Uh, it's a beat and a beat. Earnings per share coming in at 64 cents. The street expecting 59 cents. On revenue, though, once again beating 2.7 billion, and the street was expecting 2.67 billion. Uh, we want to take a look at this. Haven't been able to jump in yet at same store sales, but that's what keeps propelling them. You know, they beat last quarter, and their same store sales last quarter were up 8.7 percent, Liz. Hey, Larry, commodity prices, that is something that is definitely either not or hit Whole Foods. Do you think that they've been able to pass those costs on to their customers? Yeah, they have. And the thing is, Whole Foods has got a great footprint. Baby boomers like me like good food. I'm willing to pay more for it instead of the stuff that's being sold at the other supermarkets. Right. Keep this in mind also. They are um, profiting on a weekly basis, $930 per square foot. Nobody gets close to that in the supermarket space. Yeah, they've been opening up a lot of stores as well. Pretty aggressive expansion. Let's go up to Sandra Smith for more on Whole Foods. Yeah, Ashley, this is definitely one a lot of people are watching after the bell tonight. Whole Foods actually raising their out Outlook on a couple levels. Their full year 2012 sales view, they're now raising to about 15 to 15.6 percent. That's up a couple of percentage points uh, from their original outlook. But they're also raising their overall fiscal uh, 2012 full year look. Uh, shares are up right now about 3 percent in after hours trading. So definitely the shares reflecting that raised outlook for the full year. Very impressive. Also, by the way, they're opening up a store in Detroit, a city that's really, that's right. really struggling, which is interesting. That is there. Yeah. And they want want jobs for That's Detroit, right. which is, is certainly um, nice to hear. We're still waiting, guys, on Visa, and we're waiting yep. on Weight Watchers as well. So Prudential is also there, and Yelp on the way. But again, DreamWorks is a beat. Let's just see quickly if Larry, Green Mountain Coffee, still halted? That's what I'm seeing. That's a still halt. That's right. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, let me I get can. to Adam. Adam has Visa numbers, Visa. It's a big beat. Their shares are trading up already, 2.3%. Uh, hmm. Revenue coming in at 2.6 billion. Earnings per share, $1.60. Uh, uh, the street was yeah. expecting $1.51 earnings per share and revenue of 2.48 billion. But revenue came in at 2.6 billion, kind of like MasterCard the other day. They're, they're doing pretty well there. Yeah, Eugene, let's bring you in. Uh, Visa seems to be going from strength to strength and uh, some pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, they are. And I'm, I'm happy to see those. As, as was mentioned, MasterCard had a, had a big beat. Um, yesterday, and Visa's followed suit. And these have been two of the strongest stocks in the financial sector, even though they're rated by as technology companies. Um, swipe fees really is, is the story here. There's been some um, hesitation around the names with respect to interchange fees and lawsuits around that. But yeah. um, as the economy is improving, people are transitioning from paper money um, to credit and debit cards, and Visa and MasterCard is going to continue to benefit. And yeah. Sandra, it is also a statement on perhaps the psychology of a consumer who's out there too, and the stock is jumping about 2% plus. Cer certainly. MasterCard said it earlier, and now Visa is saying it. They're definitely seeing these transactions volumes up, and more on that 
Uh, we're actually seeing that the transactions processed were at the 13 billion mark for the first quarter. That was up 8% on a year over year basis. So transaction overall revenue grew 17% from the prior uh, year's quarter. Data processing revenues, guys, the numbers pretty much up across the board here for Visa. Whole Foods, again, is going to open at about 4.20 p.m. in just mm -hmm. a few minutes uh, for trading. So we want to keep you open for that. But also, you know, uh, sorry, Green Mountain, I was wondering, I didn't yeah. think Whole Foods was halted. <laughs> Green Mountain is halted. It will reopen at 4.20. Whole Foods, of course, moving higher. All yeah. right. Thanks, Eugene. Great to see you. And Mark, we will see you in just a few minutes for the close of the S&P futures. Whew. Lots of earnings. All right. Spirit Airlines, the airline people love to hate, posting strong profits this week. The company charges flyers to carry on a bag. The CEO will tell us whether he's planning any new fees and how he's handling those rising jet fuel prices. Plus, we've got somebody to tell you why industrial products like this catalytic converter could be the key to getting durable gains in your portfolio. Mm, and Lou Dobbs will tell us whether President Obama could pivot the election focus from the economy to the stock market. Well, as we go to the break, let's take a look at some of the widely held stocks. The Closing Bell is sponsored by TD Ameritrade, where a smart game plan starts with smarter trading tools. Let's level the playing field. Take the privileged investing tools of Wall Street and make them simple, intuitive, and available to all. Distill all that data. Make information instinctual, visual. Introducing Trade Architect, TD Ameritrade's empowering web-based trading platform. Take control of your portfolio today. Trade commission-free for 60 days, and we'll throw in up to $600 when you open an account. This is making your two cents count. This is unmatched experience and knowledge. It's savvy business know-how needed to succeed. This is business in America. This is Fox Business. Early Prime. At Merit Financial, we've been helping conservative investors diversify with gold for over 26 years. And we offer gold and silver bullion at just 1% over dealer cost. Now we've added even more popular bullion coins and bars to our product line, all at 1% over our cost. Are you looking for gold or silver eagles? How about German Marks, Austrian Philharmonics, Dutch Guilders, and many more gold and silver bullion products, all just 1% over dealer cost. Plus, if you're a first-time customer, you'll receive free insured delivery of your coins right to your doorstep. We'll even guarantee one-week delivery on in-stock gold. No additional fees, no shipping costs. So call now. Why pay more for the exact same gold and silver? In business for 26 years and with an A rating from the Better Business Bureau, there is no more trusted name than Merit Financial. Call today and remember the Merit Guarantee. The right gold at the right price right away. The inspiring story of how a shipping giant can befriend a forest may seem like the stuff of fairy tales. But if you take away the faces on the trees, take away the pixie dust, take away the singing animals, and the storybook narrator. You're left with more electric trucks, more recycled shipping materials, and a growing number of lorry mission planes, which still makes for a pretty enchanted tale. Oops, forgot one. Sustainable solutions. FedEx. Solutions that matter. Killing businesses and ruining our economy. Have government's rules finally gone too far? Senator Mike Lee sounds off on excessive overregulation. And inside the explosive viral video shaking up DC, it's all on a must-see edition of Stossel. Bring out the fork and knife. We've got Yelp earnings, Adam. <laughs> and uh, they've, well, okay, the earnings per share. They expected a loss a little bit bigger than uh, you might have thought. Earnings per share, a loss of 31 cents. Street expecting 30 cents on mm -hmm. revenue, though it's a beat. 27.4 million. Uh, the street was expecting 25.3 million. I want to give you some analytics here. Uh, they have actually increased their monthly unique visitors, Liz and Ashley, 53 percent to 71.4 million, and they've active uh, local business accounts grew to 27,300. Back to you guys. Adam, thank you. Yep. Okay, a couple of things. S&P futures pits just closing right now. Let's go back to Larry Shover. And Larry, once you give us that information, I want to know what you think of Yelp. 
Yeah, it's uh, the first one after the IPO. We need to pay, pay very close attention on their operating costs as they go forward, as they move internationally, especially in the mobile usage. I think they're leveraging a lot on that. We need to pay very close attention. Okay, futures here. Can you just give us a final look at the uh, futures pits and how they closed? Yeah, the futures closed basically on their high for the day. Really good cash down three dollars. This point, the bulls do run the agenda. Huh. We'll see what Ooh. happens with uh, we do. I think they do, and we'll see what happens with jobless claims and non-farm farm payrolls. Yeah. But it seems like the bulls do run the agenda. I mean, a lot of bad news came out with the ADP report today. Nobody oh. cares. Pe <laughs> Sorry. No, no. I like Larry, to talk. I, got all I like excited. to talk. Nobody cares. Yeah. Larry, you're welcome no. anytime. Larry Schover <laughs> in the CME so, says the bulls are on the run. Quick mention, we're four minutes away from Green Mountain Coffee, which is halted right. opening trading.